Greetings, everyone. Today on the bench, again, is the TDA 7377. I had some people in the comment section saying they were trying to parallel the channels of the amplifier together to drive a single speaker, and it wasn't working right. The power supply was drawing heavy current, and the heat sink was getting very hot. So what is the problem? So what I want to do is parallel the outputs of this board and see what the results are. Now when they were doing it, it might have been a different board. I know one person was using the, uh, the TDA 7297. I wouldn't recommend that amplifier over the 7377 because if you look here, yeah, you know, the chip itself is meant for 8 ohm loads. On the data sheet, it has less than half the current output capability than the 7377. And with a 12 volt supply, 4 ohm load, you're only getting 6.3 watts. Whereas this chip, you're getting 11.4. And 11.4 is more of what I would expect from a bridged output driving a 4 ohm load with a 12 volt supply. So what I want to do today is parallel this together and that's what I've done here. So I have load sharing resistors on each output, power supply hooked up, and uh, signal source converted to mono and put in the input here. And I shorted the center two pins or the wiper arm of the volume control together. The reason this tails left on there it just makes it easier when I return this to its original condition to desolder it and it's just it makes it easier to pull that off. So let me show you on paper here what's going on. So here I have a drawing of the TDA 7377. This may not be exactly how the chip looks. You'll have to consult the data sheet. I just drew it this way for ease and explanation. So if we look at the output first, I have the load sharing resistors. They have to be on each and every output, so you need four of them. They're 0.1 ohm resistors. The reason you need these load sharing resistors is because the gain of these amplifiers are not going to be perfectly matched, and any tiny imbalance is going to cause a short. In other words, uh, heavy current flowing between the channels. Now on the input, I'm feeding a mono signal. You cannot use a stereo signal. And because this board has a potentiometer, a volume control, on the output side or the wiper arm side of the potentiometer, in other words the side that connects to the amplifier's inputs, I've tied those together. And the reason for that is because these potentiometers may not track perfectly and there might be a slight imbalance in the signals between the channels and that will cause a heavy current to flow between the channels if I did not do that. So this ensures that the exact same signals are going into both channels. Another thing you will need to do, like I said, you can't feed in a stereo signal. So from a device that has a headphone out type connection, which I'm using here, you want to combine the channels together. You just can't short the left and right together. You have to run them through resistors. If I didn't do that, my little music player here gets really distorted because it doesn't like having its channel shorted together. So putting a resistor in series with each channel, a value of 1K, and then tying the other side of the resistor together will mix the signal to mono. If you're using a line level type source, you probably want to use a higher value like 10K, and that would depend on the impedance of your signal source. Okay, let's fire this thing up and see what it can do. Power is on. I'm already seeing something I don't like. I have the channels parallel together because one channel of this power supply can do up to 3.2 amps and the amp draws more than that when I'm loading it heavily so anyway parallel together I have to add these two currents together so sitting idle the amplifier is drawing 
400 milliamps, 0.4 amps. That's pretty excessive. Before paralleling it, it was only drawing about 70 milliamps, which is normal. So the reason this is happening is because there's probably a slight difference in the DC offsets of the outputs. When you tie it together, it's creating a small amount of current flow. It's nothing to do with the input side because there's the uh, decoupling capacitor that keeps the DC out of this part of the amplifier. Before I hook a load up and take measurements, I need to do one test. I want to do a signal test with no load connected to the amplifier. And that'll show me if there's any imbalance. So let me uh, hit play on the music player. Make sure I got a signal going through here. And I can't let that play. But anyway, there is a signal going through the amplifier. And I'll turn it up. And look at that. It doesn't really change. It's still about 400 milliamps. So that tells me the signal going through the amplifier is perfectly balanced. It's just kind of unfortunate that we're having a little bit of DC offset issues. You know what I hate? It's when you think you're recording, but you didn't press the record button on the camcorder, and now I have to reshoot the whole thing again. What fun. Okay, so now I have the forum load connected. Of course, we're in paralleled mode. Let's see what kind of power we get. Okay, we're clipping, so we'll tune that out. Right about there. Looks like 7.38. So grab my calculator and punch in 7.38 volts RMS squared divided by 4 and we're getting 13.6 watts so that's a little bit more than I was expecting with a single channel forum load like I said before I was getting 11.4 watts so this is a little bit more than 2 watts of increase and the reason for that is because each channel is putting in half the current and there'll be less losses in the amplifier even though we're using those balancing resistors on the output. So what I'm going to do now is hook up the 2 ohm load and we'll get a power measurement. Okay, there's 2 ohm. Tune out the clipping. Six point five four. I'll turn that off because it's going to get hot. 6.54 squared divided by 2 ohms, 21.4 watts. So yeah, we did get considerably more output power into the 2 ohm load because we paralleled the outputs and are able to drive such a low impedance load with this chip amp. So there you have it, the TDA7377 paralleled. It seemed to work okay with exception of that unfortunate offset voltage issue which is causing excessive idle current draw. So yeah, the problem is with these, everything's done inside the chip, all the feedback and everything. Chips like the LM1875 or the LM3886 have external feedback components where you can control the offset voltage. Well, you might be able to do something with the offset voltage by uh, using a divider network and some sort of precision control on the inputs. That's, yeah, that's just going to be monkey business. So, yeah, unless you get lucky and get a chip that doesn't have an offset voltage issue, I would say that these are really not worth monkeying with paralleling. Paralleling is only going to be of benefit when you have a lower impedance load than a single channel of the amplifier can handle. Okay, well, that was interesting. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.